Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. At one point in Chaman Bahar, Billu the Panwala asks a shopkeeper where greeting cards which say "I love you" are kept. The man looks surprised, like he can't imagine how this meek wallflower could even think about love. Who could possibly be the recipient of his devotion? Which is also our first impression of Billu. He's painfully ordinary, but because he's played with practiced ease by Jitendra Kumar, we immediately care about him. I think of Jitendra as a saltier, more prickly version of Amol Palekar. Like the veteran actor, Jitendra is instantly relatable. We can easily imagine him struggling with his job, relationships, desires. His ability to be one of us makes him endearing. But Jitendra is also a fine performer who can locate that delicate balance between the comedy and tragedy of his character's anguish. He's done this with aplomb in his first film, Shubh Mangal Zyada Savdan, and more recently in the superb streaming show, Panchayat. Even as you sympathize with his character's predicament, you are smiling because his seething has this sort of inbuilt comical streak. In Chaman Bahar, he once again finds this sweet spot. Sadly, the film doesn't. Chaman Bahar has been written and directed by debutant director Apurva Dhar Badgeryan. The film made in 2018 was meant to be Jitendra's feature debut. The story is set in Lormi, a district in Chhattisgarh. Billu is a man with determination and dreams. He's a disruptor who breaks the family tradition of working in the forest department and sets up a pawn shop called Chaman Bahar. Sadly, the district limits change and his shop on the outskirts of Lomi has barely any customers until a family moves into the house opposite the street. Their teenage daughter Rinku sets Lomi aflame. Dozens of young men start driving past only to have a look at Rinku who famously wears half pants. Billu's shop starts thriving, but he gets more miserable because he can't resist Rinku's charms either. As a character aptly puts it, Shahrukh ka picture dekh dekh ke chocolatey ho gaye hain sab. What Apurva gets right are these small town textures. You know the atmosphere, the language, these conversational styles. Everybody, these young men keep calling each other daddy. The biggest daddies here are the youth politician Shilla, who chews pan and swaggers even while spitting, and Ashu, the local rich kid. The district forest officer's son also comes by. His father's position gives him the clout to try for Rinko. The other boys understand that they have no chance, so they start to place bets on who among these will get the girl. And the circus is orchestrated by Somu and Chotu, a Jugadu Tusam who effectively function as Lormi's Narad Munis, prodding the action, hustling, and doing idhar ki baat udhar. These characters and their interactions are the most vibrant part of the film. The display of outsized egos and low IQs is amusing. Apurva also constructs some lovely grace notes, like Billu asking for a shave with Gillette once he's fallen in love with Rinku, and this lovely moment in the climax, which post climax actually, which brings him some solace. But Apurva isn't able to build on the promise of his premise. He doesn't spend enough time fleshing out these characters or the storyline. The plot is too thin, and beyond the first hour, the antics of these hordes of men in pursuit of a young girl start to wear thin. The situation is also inherently uncomfortable. In one scene, Shilla and his gang in a jeep are chasing Rinku, who's on a scooter. He tells the driver to drive faster, so she is at least aware that she's being chased. Honestly, I couldn't find the humor in this. Her school teacher also has a crush on her, which is just flat out creepy. Rinku, played by Ritika Badiani, isn't so much a character as an idea. She barely speaks in the film, and we know little about her apart from the fact that she loves her dog, who she walks outside their home. When she does this, time stands still for Billu. But neither he nor any of the other boys know her, and neither do we. She symbolizes modernity, romance, and all that is sparkling in this dusty, testosterone-filled landscape. The film also keeps shifting tonally, from comic vein to serious and later satirical. The background score keeps prodding us to laugh. When a tough cop enters the story, we get Shole-like sound effects. Which I think is supposed to be funny, but we go from this to full-blown emotional drama, which feels out of place. The subtitles are also a little distracting. Does Lafunder really translate into town bitch? I don't know, but it's such a great word that I think we should all just add it to our vocabulary. You can see Chaman Bahar on Netflix.